Good morning, listeners. My name is Patrick Shanigan, and you are listening to Ornithology Weekly on CDC Radio 1. The latest bird news, facts, and findings every Saturday at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. Now before you listen, there's something I'd like you to hear. That was the guttural, earthy call of the brant. The brant is one of my favorite migratory seabirds because it shares a name with my niece. My sister was pondering the name she was to bestow upon her progeny for some time. She consulted the moon, the stars, and our shaman, Greg. But she still hadn't decided on a name even by the time she had entered labor and had been brought down to the birthing pond at the base of the great oak. When little Brant's head first broke the surface of the tranquil waters of the life pool, she let out a low cry. I immediately exclaimed, That is the sound of the Brant! My sister sat up from her kelp bed and smiled as she cradled her newborn. Then she said, Then we shall call her Brant. <coughs> The Brant's scientific name is Branta Bernicla, and it is part of the goose family. It travels further north than any other goose, and on long-distance flights, the Brant will climb to several thousand feet. Like most geese, the Brant is a vegetarian and eats mostly eel grass when available. Eel grass is delicious, and my neighbor Ken once made me the most scrumptious eel grass salad. It's a very simple dish that is just CBD oil-infused vinaigrette, lightly drizzled on freshly tossed eelgrass and spinach. As we devoured the leafy treat and sipped rosé, the conversation inevitably turned to seabirds. I told Ken that the wild brand loves to eat eelgrass, and Ken said he is sure that geese only want to eat him, as they chase him around the dock in the springtime. I explained that geese can be very aggressive, and it's best to stay away. If you play with fire, you're going to get brant. My guest this week has just finished writing a book on North American geese, and is a guest lecturer at the University of Victoria and the University of British Columbia and she also happens to be my neighbor. It's so nice to welcome Dr. Evelyn Crabtree back to the studio. Thanks for being here, Doctor. Thanks for having me, Patrick. I have to say, I love the title of your book. The book is called, Oh Geese, Wild Geese of the Americas. What inspired that title? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Geese can be very territorial, and while I was in the field with my grad students studying these birds, they often charged us. Once, a full-grown brant dove at my student, Brillo, and she yelled, Oh, geese, instead of, Oh, geez, and we all laughed. That is hilarious. Was your student okay? Oh, yes, she was fine. She ran pretty fast for a 36-year-old, but she knew she had to survive because she's graduating this year. <laughs> oh, my. If you play with fire, you're going to get brant. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Did you just think of that? Actually, no, I thought of it while I was having dinner with Ken last week. Oh, that's so nice. It's nice that Ken is inviting people over for dinner. Where did you do your field study? Well, I spent some time in California, but I was on Baffin Island for two weeks to study the breeding behavior of the brant. It is important for us to study these northern birds to understand the impact of climate change on them, as climate change has a much greater impact in the north. What effects have you seen so far? The brant has been migrating increasingly further north as the summers grow hotter in the Arctic. What happens when they can't fly further north? Well, then that's that. Okay, when is your book coming out? It's being published this summer and will be available in the campus bookstores of the University of Victoria and the University of British Columbia. Thanks for chatting, Evelyn. Anytime.
Well, that's it for the show. Thank you so much for listening, and happy bird day.